Hey YouTube, we're back for part number four of the Arrow Commander. Awesome scale details. We're just adding some details. We got the windshield wipers. They're not just two-dimensional. It's just painted on there. We got the uh, tips painted. And we're just getting ready to put these little exhaust vents on, which we had been painting in part one and two. And these little details just really make make the plane pop. And then this little thing here. This little detail here. Which is just a cool little little detail. You're not gonna get that from the factory. I mean of course I don't expect Horizon to be able to do all these little crazy details because it would cost a fortune in labor. But it looks a, a lot more scale if you can just put a couple of these pieces together. You got the tire and the wheels just a little bit too big. I may have to back those off with some black paint. But I like them better than I liked them before. Um, so these vents, I printed off a montage of my different mounting locations that we're going to try to figure out here and I want to get myself a q-tip I pretty much think I already know where I want to put these things but you can imagine that online you get a lot of information that it may not always be relevant so this is from a simulator so you can see that those things fall right behind the, the black line but the de-icing black portion is a little bit bigger on that model than ours. And you can see right here where, where we've got those vents. So we know for sure that it's, it's a real functional item. And then you can see in Bob Hoover's plane, he had the vents and do the smoke, drop the smoke, change the mix, and then blow a bunch of smoke out of the nacelles. So you can see those ones look like they're located uh, back a little bit further and they've got that black painted area. But I didn't see that feature on all of them. I saw that feature on a few of them. So I was thinking that this this line here might be a good idea to just follow that line just for the simple fact that it's going to be easier to kind of hit our target, you know. If we try to bring them back midway, it's harder to be precise with our placement. And I think that that's close enough to give the scale appearance that we're going for. Um, if we go back further, then I think it looks, it, it doesn't seem right. Um, and I already, I already did this earlier this week. See, moving them back further doesn't agree now with this because you see this little the scoop detail it seems to be about where those come up. And then you can see the scoop detail on the Bob Hoover plane. And then there's a gap. There's Well, there's no gap because that's where the vent is. It's just the black portion would be following the vents. So I think this is where they need to go. And so the way I intend to glue these down is going to just be with CA and probably a little bit of kicker in close proximity there. So now for placement left and right, I was thinking of going close out to the edge, but not so close that it's onto the round of the nacelle. These landing gear just move every time you bump this thing, so it's tricky to work with this aircraft. Okay, so now one thing that really helps when you're trying to locate these things is if you can grab a, a pair of calipers. Um, you can measure like this or like this, like a pinch grip or you can measure on the inside of a circle 
but you've also got this shaft that you can reach out and that really helps. I don't even use the batteries in this so I just look at the reading mechanically once I get it where I want it. Looks like the easiest way is still going to probably be this. Eh, maybe that. Okay so I'm five millimeters in. Yeah. So that's that's pretty close actually. I'm surprised how close I got that. Um, so now the other thought I had was if I want to try to do the black um, detail then now would be the time to be making that choice and not later. Now one thought I had was I could just take some tape. That might be an easier way of accomplishing that detail. And then if I decide I don't like the detail, it's a little bit easier to remove it. And this vinyl tape will probably pull off some of the clean texture, but it'll at least give me a chance to remove it if I don't like the way it turns out. So I'll just take this vinyl tape, we'll do that. I don't think I want to do the oil marks because I guess honestly I don't want to represent a dirty plane even though a dirty plane may look real it's still a dirty plane like I I wouldn't want to fly around in a dirty plane well, looks, looks really nice from the backside there so we'll just do that. Um, I may need to trim the electrical tape just a little bit less than what I did on that one. But this is nice too because then it gives me a, a place to locate where the vent is going to be. So let's see how it looks with the thinner piece. The thinner piece looks okay. I think I need to go a little bit thicker than that. So this is our, this will be our gauge. I'm going to go just a little bit thicker than that. And I like using the width of the, the tape because then that makes it very consistent and easy. Oh yeah, that's about right. You could also just gauge it up this way. Eh, a little bit too thick still. And keep in mind guys that vinyl tape, electrical tape, is quite heavy so don't overdo it with electrical tape resist the urge to overdo it I'm gonna ignore any of that advice myself <laughs> this side needs to be thinned up just a little bit so I can get good adhesion with the glue okay so whichever side is less square I'm gonna cut looks like it'd be this side Okay, a little bit less material there. Now we'll just take this and see how I painted that that black in there. That's pretty close, needs just a touch more. Oh, too thin, dang it. Overdid it. That ought to work now. But it looks like I don't really have it totally square. Cutting vinyl tape, I found that as the two blades of the scissors like to cut. A lot of times the cut will will walk it will walk away just by the nature of the cut of the scissors. A lot of people like to do calligraphics for things like this and they'll just uh, use a decal set for details like this. And that's cool if you've got lots of cash lying around. Not to diminish anybody who decides to to do that. 
from what I understand, the workmanship is very good. But I just don't have that kind of cash sitting around. I'd rather put my money into a new plane. Okay, so I'm just going to do three little strips of glue. And then I'm going to take some kicker. And I'll just spritz it on here. I'll set this down into it. I'm going to pick it up. I'm actually going to use the forceps this time. Ooh, it makes me nervous. I'm going to take the paint off. That would suck the big one. You only get one chance to do it right. So do it right on the first chance. Because that kicker will make that set up as soon as you drop it down, which is what you want to happen. Okay, so now that we've got that down, we can go ahead and just do one more fine little drip. Get the bubbles out first before you bring that nozzle down. Just run along the leading edge there. Perfect. Now I'm going to take this Q-tip and just take up the excess, if there is any, which is very minimal. Now we could probably glue it in place too, but I like the idea of being able to get kicker on it. Okay, so we got a good thick bed of glue there for this to set in. The kicker will collapse the glue a little teeny bit, meaning it's going to make it less tall. Okay, that worked a lot easier that time. Now let's hope I get this right. really good guys okay leave it let's wipe the tip and we're gonna do that to the other side okay cool so those are both on there now Boy, that looks really good. Um, so now we just have to duplicate that on the other side and trying to make them look the same. Symmetry is a real challenge when it comes to these little models. Not because they're little, but just symmetry in general. I didn't have a square cut on that, so I'm just going to toss it. Because it's not square, you end up just kind of going back and forth. Okay, cool. That should be pretty good. So now, um, I think we might be okay if we go the other direction with it. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect, Mundo. Oops. Okay. Now obviously, if I had to remove any of this, it'd be a real pain in the neck. So, ideally, I want to not remove it, but... If I had to, for some weird reason, I'd be able to pull the whole thing off, which is really nice. I like the flexibility. I hope I don't need the flexibility. Okay, grab onto it with a loose grip so you don't take the paint off. And see, there's already kicker down here, so I don't even need to coat it anymore. Okay, now we're just going to take and 
hold the tip of our finger, push it into the bed of glue, got a little bit of glue on us, wipe it on the wood. So far so good. Now we will clean the tip to avoid cross-contamination with kicker. One drip right across the leading edge, and that's it. Leave it be. Don't mess with it. Resist the temptation, Brian. Okay, so now the last piece. Just double check for squareness. I suppose that looks like it might be a little on the narrow side. Sorry guys, took you off camera there. That looks about right. Yeah, that's good. It's good stuff. We're doing it. Guys, this is part four of a video series I thought was not going to be a series, which, you know, seems to be kind of my mantra. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, if you guys were doing this, this is really not a super time-intensive thing. It's just that when you're doing this stuff on camera, everything takes longer. Constantly having to worry about focus of cameras and stuff like that that you wouldn't you wouldn't have to do if you're building it. And then I have to stop and go take the videos off the phone and you know those steps that you wouldn't normally have to do if you're just doing the construction. Still takes a while, but uh, there we go. Got one big drip. Okay, pull it across. And that didn't spread the way I was hoping it would. So I'm going to walk down the paint and just wiggle a little bit of that out of there. Okay, good enough. Okay, so now we leave it for a minute. Clean the tip. If you take care of your tips, your tips will take care of you. Or they won't take care of you like they do to me. Because I do take care of my tips and they still don't take care of me. But I know there's a lot of people that just don't even care and they work fine. Never get a clog tip. Don't understand it at all. Guys, that looks so good. Those black fence, man, if you were going to do nothing else. Well, I don't know. All these little things I think look really good. The tires were easy. The oleo strut assembly was easy. This was easy. That was challenging. Look how glorious that looks. And with those vent details, how sweet is that? Looks so good. And then these antennas and that thing back there. What are we missing? That would be correct. We got to get our little... And by the way, if you guys copy me, pick another number at least. Because this number is not mine. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty decent. And you can see that the red is a, is a close match. It's not a perfect match, but it's close enough for what we're doing. Now, I had thought about the idea of maybe just putting that there so that our seam lined up perfectly between the A and the C. But then I thought, yeah, but that's not going to get blocked by the nacelle a lot of the time. I'm probably just going to have to bite the bullet and move it back quite a bit so that the seam between the 7 and the 4 lines up with it. Plus that gets it back into the point where it's going to be visible more frequently because the back of the nacelle really does block that. Now, when I was upstairs getting these things printed off, oh, we can move this over now. I always keep these things, guys, just for future, you know, use. And then I put them like with the manual for the plane. Okay, so when I was upstairs, I already trimmed this down. 
so that it's just super tight to where the numbers are. You wouldn't have to do that, but what I'm going to do here is just basically trim off just the most corner extremities here so that hopefully they won't show up at all because I'm not going to go through the trouble of trimming 100% of the white space out since we have a white backdrop. I think we'll be okay without. The big problem, and it is kind of a big problem, is that this is paper and it will wick moisture if moisture gets through. So my hope is moisture won't get through, but it's not like a vinyl sticker. And there are ways to transfer this on with a vinyl sticker. I just don't have any interest in doing that. This is way too much work. Okay, so let's figure out our tape. So the next step is going to be tape. Um, that tape technically is big enough, and this is really good tape. The problem is it's just barely big enough. I could do two pieces, but I think my best bet is to just go with the higher quality, heavy duty packing tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very recklessly stick this on there and get it over with. Okay? Then I'm going to take my scissors. I'm just going to trim this back. Now we'll do that for the other side too. And you'll notice the other side is. Um, is reverse italics. That's correct in the aviation industry. That's correct from an FAA stand, standard. You don't have to have an italics at all, but if you're going to do it, it's supposed to be one way and the other way. Or I, more specifically, what is allowed is to do it that way. Now, the other thing I could do to help with water penetration is I could put a piece of tape on the back of this which would also help with removal if I ever do have to remove this, which I'm guessing I'm probably not going to have to. And then this tape as it goes across the the decal there, that black decal, I think that's just life. That's just the way it's going to go. And to be perfectly honest, I'm sorry I had you out of a, a view there, guys. I'm just going to stick it on there and be done with it. Because to be honest with you, it looks pretty good right now, and I'm satisfied with that. I've already spent hours just toiling over the stupidest details on this plane. Not the least of which would be that. And it looks like it's pretty perfectly level. The problem is the asymmetry of the plane makes it look like it's not level on camera. In real life it looks pretty level because I'm up a little bit higher. I think it looks awesome. Okay, so let's get the other one on. Now, seeing all these different revisions, this whole stack is just all different revisions of um, making decisions on size and whatnot. You don't have to waste that much time because you can just copy what I did. Just pick your own numbers and letters. But I found a website that has examples of round, half round, and then a military style uh, character scheme. And so you can just take and move those over into paint. Just make sure if they're something, something you're trying to get as copyrighted that you don't get yourself in trouble. I'm pretty sure that letters are not copyrighted. I mean letters in specific organization called words would be copyrighted I suppose but not actually letters. Okay great. So there you have that. So obviously this is going to go on the other side. But before we put it on the other side, we need to get some tape on there. Let's just dry fit this. Okay, so two things we need to establish. The break point, and then are we going to have it even with the other side? Ideally, we will. And to be honest, I think that's where it's going to go. 
and that's the way it's going to be. It's going to be chopping the seven when we have to get in there. And that's the first thing I've done on this whole project that's going to require that we chop into any of our handiwork. I'm not a big fan of that, but it is what it is. There's only so much you can do on some of these details. Okay, so we're going to pull this down, this piece of tape. Oh, I hate it when I get those little lines. It's just when you peel it off that way. So I usually go to a place where there isn't those little buffeting lines or whatever you want to call those. So just put a tail on that. Okay, so now tape has been applied. Now we just trim both sides off. And then we trim top and bottom. We want to keep about about that much on top and bottom. Try to keep your fingers on the paper so as to avoid contaminating the adhesive area with your fingerprints because they will be seen potentially. Now I have to touch it. Okay, so I'm lining this up. Ooh, I don't want to be on the wrap of the plane. I want to be flat on the flat. Cool. And if you don't like the way that this reverse italics looks on here, just do the normal italics. But go look at a bunch of plane pictures. This is the way it is done 100% of the time. Which is weird to me. I think the italics looks good both ways. Just the standard italics. But see, when you look at it like this, look how sweet that looks. Guys, look at all the details. Oh, it looks so gorgeous. It makes me think now we've got to do stupid gear door um, because it just looks so dang pretty. So let's do a real quick rundown on what's left. I don't think there's anything left, but let's double check. We're not going to do the oil stains. We're not doing that. Yes. Yes. And yes, we're done on that. So now, um, I think we better just plop a lipo in there. If we have a 2S lipo, that'd be handy. I'm going to see if I can find one. And there you have it, guys. Look how sweet that looks. Got the big landing lights. Got the nav lights. Let's go ahead and shut off the filming lights here. Got the exhaust vents. Look how awesome that looks, guys. I'm real happy with it. Got the windshield wipers. Got the two antennas. This does inspire me somewhat to put another antenna on there. Maybe we could put the antenna here to help take the canopy off. Except I try to grab it from there every time. Got the green nav light. Got the white tail light. Got the little weird tail thing. And if these need to be straight, guys, put it in the comments and I'll I'll straighten them up. And of course, you got the the numbers. Oh, and I don't know if you noticed, but there's a shadow on there too. What a beaut, guys. The one thing this thing is still missing, and you and I both know it. And I wish I could say I wasn't going to do it because it'd be a lot easier probably will still and that would be the magic word flaps thanks for watching guys come back for more don't forget to like and subscribe we'll try to get you a flight video when the weather cooperates but no promises right this second because the uh the winter is upon us